Hi, I'm Baker, and let's talk about Game of Thrones. I don't know about you guys, but I'm very excited for Season 7. Season 6 ended on a very strong note with that awesome finale. Now everyone's in a very interesting position, and I'm looking forward to seeing how like the different storylines are going to collide. Unfortunately, Season 7 doesn't premiere until the middle of July, so it's pretty early to do like a normal season preview given that tons of info is going to come out. So I'm going to do something different. I'm going to set an over-under on the number of characters that'll die next season. And for the sake of this number, I'm going to include a combination of both the major characters and most of the recurring ones. The standard for which characters qualify is pretty subjective, but to me it's if they've appeared in at least 4 episodes, played an important role in the plot, or if they've built an emotional connection with the audience enough so that their death elicits a response. The world of Game of Thrones is so vast and rich that you need supporting characters to kinda, you know, fill the meat of it, make it feel real, and keep you engaged. With the standard set, what should our number be? Well, a good place to start is to reference past seasons, and before I get into this, I know I'm either going to forget characters or put in characters that don't belong there, so if you disagree, comment and let me know, because I'm interested to see where opinions will differ on this. But yeah, in Season 1, there were 6 deaths. In Season 2, there were 11. In Season 3, there were 8. In Season 4, there were 13. In Season 5, there were 12. I'm counting John even though he got brought back, because his death did have an impact both emotionally and for the sake of the plot since it let him leave the Night's Watch. Finally, Season 6 had a whopping 24 deaths, the most by far. Good job, Cersei. So this gives an overall average of 12 and a third, but averages don't tell the full story. If you graph it out, we see an upward trend, so the obvious line of thinking is that Season 7 will have more. In fact, I decided to poorly apply some math. I created a linear model of the death progress using regression, and as a result I got a model predicted value of 19.6 deaths for Season 7. However, we should also note that Season 7 will only have 7 episodes instead of the usual 10. So let's take 19.6 and multiply it by 7 tenths. This gives us 13.72. So to get to my final number, let's round it down to 13.5. Therefore, by using these mathematical methods in such a horribly incorrect way, I've arrived at an over-under of 13.5 for the number of character deaths in Season 7. And you know what, I'm pretty happy with this number. As mentioned before, the average of the first few seasons was 12 and a third. So what this number implies is that Season 7 will have about one more than average. Which I think makes sense because the series is starting to wrap up, which means these storylines need to wrap up. So you know what that means? Death. But just in case you don't think 13.5 is a good number, here's 14 contenders. I'm not saying all of these characters will die, but these are the most conceivable character deaths in my opinion. First of all, we can throw on one new character since there's a decent chance that'll happen. I think the safest bet to die is Cersei. Even though she won the throne last season, she has a city that hates her and Daenerys coming after her. So yeah, I think Cersei's toast, and by proximity I'd add the Mountain and Kyburn to the list. Although Kyburn does have a very decent shot of living, if only because he'd be a useful person for Daenerys to keep on her team. Sort of like how Robert kept Pycelle and Varys from the Mad King's small council. But yeah, let's go ahead and add Cersei, Kyburn, and the Mountain to our list to bring us to 4. Now let's get into some hardcore spoilers. It leaked a while back that Euron's gonna team up with Cersei against Daenerys, and since I think Cersei's going down, Euron's going down. Hell, even if the leak's wrong, if Euron's going against Daenerys, I'll take Daenerys any day. He has ships. She has dragons. Wooden ships and fire don't mesh. Bring it to 5. Another thing that's supposed to happen is that at least one of the Sand Snakes will die. Probably all of them except for this one. Hopefully all of them. Also, either Theon or Yara will get captured by Euron. Littlefinger's interesting. I love the King in the North scene for tons of reasons. One such reason is this moment. No dialogue, just a look. And you know so much, and yet so little. You know Littlefinger's making plots, he's trying to drive a wedge between Jon and Sansa. But you don't know how Sansa will respond to this. Is she gonna stick with Jon or go on board with Littlefinger? This has been like, the most discussed thing about the next season. And you know, everyone's got an opinion, but personally, I think Sansa would be a fool to go against Jon. 
Let's look at John's resume. He got the Northerners and the Wildlings to rally behind him, and they put aside the laws on Bastard specifically for him. They loved him that much. Littlefinger may have the veil, but all the lords and ladies distrust him, and his strongest ally is some wimpy little kid. Now look, Littlefinger might have some more tricks up his sleeve since he did mastermind, you know, the entire plot of the show. But you know what, I'm gonna be bold with this prediction. Littlefinger's gonna die, and he'll die sooner than you think. Yeah, add him to the list. And yeah, add Robin to the list. The White Walkers are coming, and I think they're gonna cross the wall by the finale at the latest. The front line of this battle will be the Night's Watch, and I don't think they've fully recovered enough from not only the Wildling battle, but the fact that they kinda lost their Lord Commander out of nowhere. So I think the Night's Watch might get creamed, which doesn't bode well for Ed. It's conceivable. The Brotherhood Without Banners is coming back, which I'm very, very excited about. I just love the Riverland stuff for some reason, you know, it's just interesting to me. But getting back to the Brotherhood, there used to be some Lady Stoneheart buzz, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Nevertheless, I'm worried about Beric Dondarrion. Dondarrion. This is such an easy name to pronounce, and yet I can't pronounce it. Anyways, I love this guy, but they brought up the theme of the unsustainability of his lifestyle before, so now he's coming back in the series, you know, doing things, fighting battles, and I'm worried about how he'll hold up. Strong contender here. Also, the Freys are dead, and King's Landing isn't exactly in the position to provide stable support, so the Riverlands are in political turmoil which might be Edmure's time to shine as the Lord of Riverrun. Or it might be his time to die since he's a schmuck. Hope the Blackfish comes back. Heading back south, Jorah is basically marked for death with the Grayscale, but there is a cure out there. The one true king Stannis found it, but I'm just not sure how Jorah's gonna find it. And you know, Jorah dying would be a good, you know, emotional moment. So yeah, another strong contender. Finally, someone from Daenerys' inner circle has to die, I think, to show that conquering Westeros won't go as simply as she's planned it out. Grey Worm, I think, is the likeliest candidate, and here's why. When I researched for this video, I came across an article from winteriscoming.net that put odds on 50 characters. It's a great read and a good refresher of past characters, and I thought one of their most insightful points was one on Grey Worm. It said, Grey Worm is a talented and disciplined warrior but he'll face threats in Westeros he hasn't faced in Essos. For one thing, the Unsullied aren't used to fighting armored knights of the kind Cersei is likely to send against Daenerys. Nor are they any good at fighting on water, which could be a problem if Euron attacks Daenerys' fleet at sea. So yeah, Daenerys is gonna face new challenges, especially with terrain, since she's mostly been used to desert and urban warfare. You know, I'm an armchair general, but basically what I'm saying is that the battle will be different from all her last ones, so the best way to express that is by having a character die, probably the one who best represents the Esso style of warfare, which is Grey Worm. So yeah, there's 14 contenders which reaches our line, and there are other characters too that might die, check that article for more. So with a line of 13.5 though, I'd actually take the under. Why? Because after season 6, we expect characters to die, but Game of Thrones has always been about subverting expectations. You know, before, characters you expected to live would die. Now I think characters you expect to die will live. And yeah, I know with really two big wars coming, it's kind of stupid to think that less characters will die than expected. But you know what, my gut says take the under, and I'm gonna listen to my gut. So yeah, that's it. I have an over-under of 13.5 characters dying in the next season, and I take the under. Which would you take? Do you agree with the number I said? Comment, start a discussion, complain, and most of all, thanks for watching. This video has been powered by Patreon. If you want to give us some more support, head to patreon.com slash roundtablevids, become a patron, and get some awesome perks. Thanks for watching another video on the Roundtable. If you want to get more involved with our community and watch videos from Let's Talk with Tom, Voxbox, and more, click the video right here. Or if you want to get some more of the animation goodness, watch some Crystal Clear or Mini Monday, click the video right here. And please, don't forget to subscribe.